Today, we are going to talk about one of my favorite fish, probably my favorite freshwater fish, uh, and that is the carp. Nature's perfect destruction machine and yet cutest face. Uh, the fish that I have worked the most with in my life uh, are carps. Uh, there's a lot of different carps, but I have worked the most with them in my life, and I do love them, but they are a huge problem everywhere in the United States, and honestly, everywhere, everywhere. So it's uh, an interesting thing to talk about them. So first of all, what are carp? Because people have this misconception that like all carp look like this, or carp are a bunch of things that they're not. What we call Asian carp, which are the invasive species in the United States, is basically just a collection of carp, uh, of cyprinids. Uh, Cyprinidae is a family that includes the carps. Uh, and so basically it's just a collection of them that we sort of deem are all the same thing, or are grouped together. They're not super closely related. Some of them are in the same genus, but not a lot of them are. Like things like koi, things like goldfish are in that same family. Um, but we don't call them carp for some reason. Actually, I think we call koi a mercarp. It's like their, their actual common name. So it's basically just the really heavy-bodied, big cyprinids. So the things in that family that get really big. Uh, and they are, they're native not in the United States, but they've been introduced here and they become an invasive species. And if you don't know what an invasive species is, it's basically just an animal that does not belong in this environment, is not originally from this environment, has found its way here, uh, and is now causing harm to other species in that area. So what makes them so destructive? Why are they nature's perfect, you know, destruction machine? Well, they're invincible. First of all, they can live in literally anything. This is a photo that I took, an underwater photo that I took of a common carp from a three foot deep stream in an urban polluted area. This stream was gross. This stream was shallow. There was like no room for anywhere to go. It was polluted. It was, you know, plastic filled. And yet I found multiple huge carp in there. They can survive in pretty much any waters. Yeah, someone said drop a nuke, they would still be alive. I could see that. It's very possible. And then there's generalism, which is just the fact that they eat literally anything and tons of it. And when they eat, they actually do this thing where they like sift through the soil. If you've ever had a fish tank, you might see your fish like pick up some rocks and then spit them out or pick up some sand and spit them out. Carp do that to the hugest degree. And what that leads to is when they're pulling up that dirt trying to eat things is that they dig up plants. So all of the plants that were rooted in the bottom of your pond or your river or anything like that are getting uprooted and then dying. So carp are water raccoons, kind of. They destroy everything. But here's what they have that raccoons don't. First of all, invincibility. Second of all, size. They're absolutely huge. Curious about invasive species that don't cause harm. Do they just become part of the ecosystem or are they still considered invasive? So that's called an introduced species. That just means that it's there. It's not originally there, but uh, it's not necessarily causing harm. So yeah, carp get absolutely huge, if you didn't know, as many cyprinids do. And in addition, they can produce one million eggs in a single year. So imagine a million new of this thing here being produced every year by a single carp, by one carp. Of course, not all the larvae survive, but they can make an absolutely ass load of, uh, of new fish. And because they get so huge, because they eat literally everything and they have such a destructive way of foraging, and because they can live literally everywhere, they are nature's perfect destruction machine. I mean, they just destroy absolutely everything. They are so perfectly set up to just destroy everything. So how do we get here? How did they become this invasive? Like many invasive species, a bunch of dudes in the early 1900s thought it was a good idea to stock them everywhere. If you guys have never looked at invasive species, most of the creatures that exist around us that shouldn't exist here were introduced by a bunch of dudes in the early 1900s who were like, hey, it would be cool if we had carp here to fish, or it would be cool if we had trout here to fish, or something like that. And so they just introduced some of them. And then the population just absolutely explodes because, as it says, they are stupid good at surviving and reproducing and eating. And so they just spread and destroy ecosystems. And at this point, there's basically nowhere in the United States that you're not finding some type of carp. Like they've spread basically everywhere. So what do we do about it? Uh, one of the methods is fishing. People will do trawl nets on boats, you know, in like rivers and ponds and stuff like that. And they're actually big competitions where they'll offer tons of money for whoever can catch the most poundage of carp. And you can catch like millions of them in the course of a month, but this will never eradicate 
eradicate the carp. Uh, and it's really expensive to do this. This is an expensive thing to pay fishermen to go out on the boat all day, every day, catch shitloads of carp and then find something to do with them. And there's also the fact that you only can catch big groupings of them. Uh, you're not going to catch every individual, so this is never going to eradicate the population, uh, which is more what we'd kind of want to do to hopefully eradicate or just control the population until they blend more into the natural environment. Uh, so then we have chemical warfare. Uh, we use things like rotenone. Rotenone is a piscicide, so if you know what a pesticide is, kills pests like bugs. Piscicide is a pesticide for, for fish. Uh, and basically what we do is we just use, we just spray a bunch of chemicals into the water where carp are spawning. But piscicides are general, and they can, they can hurt other fish as well. Um, so basically we'll only do this kind of thing when we find like a grouping of carp where they've all gathered together to reproduce and then we just dump a bunch of chemicals in the water and kill all those dang carp hell yeah brother and then finally we have literal stds this is an actual headline from australian news australia to destroy alien carp by releasing herpes into rivers <laughs> this is an actual thing that is happening right now and uh being attempted so as ridiculous as it seems, this is like an actual, actually maybe decent method of, of uh, you know, destroying things because it's carp specific. Unlike the other methods, like trawl nets are always going to catch other fish. Chemical warfare is always going to kill other fish in the area. This method is carp specific because diseases and viruses and parasites, if you remember, like I've told you before, generally tend to be specific to one organism and very rarely make a jump. You ever heard of COVID-19, this crazy disease that's everywhere in the world? That is a disease that happened to make a jump. But it's very rare that things like that make a jump. So if you, you know, can release a, a virus that is going to spread and then, you know, potentially kill these animals, it could not, you know, be the worst idea. Uh, but that's assuming it doesn't go off script. I wrote assuming it doesn't go off script because you don't ever truly know. In the same way that, like, we look back at 1900 scientists and be like, damn, they were stupid for releasing a bunch of carp everywhere. People in a hundred years might look back at us and be like, damn, they were stupid for releasing a bioengineered disease everywhere as it like, you know, mutated and killed all of the fish instead. So you never really know how things are going to turn out, but it's 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 not the worst idea. It's definitely a good idea in theory if it doesn't go crazy because it can uh, be specific to carp. It can spread virally when there's big groupings of carp, you know, in a packed population when they all group together. So are we doomed? Is this, this is a question I get a lot. People ask me a lot. Are we are we doomed? You know, are invasive species just going to be what they are? It happens all the time. Last year in New Jersey, you know, in lantern flies, a type of bug invaded, and the government spent millions of dollars trying to stop or prevent this invasion of lantern flies. And let me tell you, last summer the entire earth and around me was covered in lantern flies like they're everywhere and so people have this idea that it's really hard to and it's true it's really hard to prevent invasive species uh, from doing what they're gonna do so people often ask the question to me and you know other people who work with carp are we doomed and i think the answer is yes and no everything's not gonna die the ecosystem will reach an equilibrium point but we're not gonna stop carp you're just going to have to accept that carp are going to be everywhere and we can slow them down. We can give natives the opportunity to adapt, give them time to figure it out, uh, you know, give them time to evolve. You know, the natives that are surviving a carp invasion, give them time to reproduce. But the reality is carp are going to be everywhere. They are too good at being a fish. They are too good at invading and destroying. Uh, there's not much that we can do to totally prevent that conclusion other than maybe nuke the earth. And even then, I'm not convinced that there wouldn't be carp that survived. So that is my presentation on carp. Because people ask me about carp a lot and I love carp. They literally have cheat codes, yeah. <laughs>